Yes, okay. yes. The real game changer in X-Plane 10 is that everything is three-dimensional, real, and plausible. At no point do I simply draw the roof of a building flat on the ground. At no point do I simply draw the roof of a car flat on a road. At no point do I simply draw a cloud image a long ways away. Everything must be three-dimensional and built up from the smallest little piece. All of the cars are three-dimensional cars that drive on the road. All of the buildings are three-dimensional buildings that are drawn on the ground. And actually, they have a lot of detail. A lot of detail. Even the cars, I saw uh, yes. really detailed. Headlights and taillights. Oh, and all of the clouds must be completely three-dimensional clouds. And I can show you those here. Weren't they in the past, or in previous uh, yes. Simulation games? Yes, we have seen three-dimensional clouds before. But in X-Plane 9, those clouds had some repetition. You could sometimes see the same cloud over and over repeated. Here in X-Plane 10, you can never see the same cloud twice. Everything is completely randomly generated according to various mathematical principles and random number generation. And as a result, there is no repetition and you will never see the same thing twice. And is it based on real world weather? Yes, it can be real weather. It can also be weather that you set. And it can also be weather that you set per region, where you set some regions to be cloudy and some regions to be clear. So here, as we lift up in our 747 over the Seattle area, you can see the clouds are really three-dimensional. And we can zoom through those clouds so you can see how three-dimensional they really yeah, are. That's nice. So I will pull up the nose a little bit aggressively. The heat here. Yep, we have the heat the coming off the engine. And we oh, are entering lights. the clouds and now coming out the top. Wow. This is what it is like to fly a real airplane through the clouds. This is what happens when we build everything in three dimensionals, from the smallest puff of cloud to the most complex piece of geometry, such as this airplane. We wind up with a three dimensional, constantly moving, constantly changing variable world. Each puff of cloud is lit up at a different color according to its altitude, latitude, longitude, and sun location so that sunsets and sunrises move across the sky over time. At first, in the sunset, for example, those clouds will start to turn red off in the distance and then gradually go deeper and deeper red and into gray as the sunset moves across the sky. With thousands of different variations? With thousands of variations, yes. So, for example, if we were to go to this view and then perhaps zoom out a bit, I will now start changing the time of day. And as I change the time of day, you can see the clouds that are closer to the sun still have some orange, while the clouds that are closer to us are starting to go pink and gray. And as the sun gradually gets lower and lower, you can see we have lost the sunset and are going to evening clouds here, but there is still just a little bit of sunset off in the distance. This is not a two-dimensional image of a cloud. You will not see the same thing twice, ever. There are too many permutations. These are actual three-dimensional constructs of clouds where each bit of cloud is lit up according to its and own color. Even of the cloud itself, it changes. That's correct. The, the color mm. changes based on the altitude and location. And of course, as the sun goes down, even soon the last little bit of light is gone from the clouds and you start to see the terrain down, down below. And the stars, are they And random? the stars are, star they are, they are actual stars. The, the star constellations are real. And then as you start to fly along into the night over the darkening clouds with the city below, you do start to get a feeling that really is similar to what you feel in a real airplane. As the clouds get dark and you see the cities down below and you start to see the difference between all the little details and cars and headlights going on down in the city, the sun setting up above, and at that moment you realize the world is kind of small <laughs> when you can see so much at once in an airplane that is moving so fast. All right, let's take a look then at the scenery. This is kind of an interesting look at the weather and the clouds. Let's go on ahead and make it night 
and see if we can go down and look at the city. You see the road there, and you might think that it is a lit texture. That is simply drawing roads with a lit up texture. That is not the case. Every single light you see is a dynamic light that will light up the airplane, the cars, and the trucks that pass near it. So no more night textures? The whole world is The whole light. world is dynamically lit. That is correct. So let us go down here in the 747 and take a look at how far this world goes. An interesting thing about this is when you have all the dynamic lights of the cities and the dynamic lights along the roads, the airports are visible, but they don't completely stand out. The airports can be a little bit difficult to pick out of the clutter of city lights in the simulator just as they are in reality. Yeah, and actually they are dark. So They're dark. The... Exactly. And so you can see this airport is a dark zone in the city lights, recognizable only by the rabbit and the rotating beacon. And once you are in the X of the landing, the lights will become more apparent okay. as you align yourself with the runway. And so as we get in closer, we start to see the taxiway lights and the runway lights at the end of the flashers. This is very much what it is like to bring a real airplane in at night. All right, now let's go down over the roads here. Maybe and you will start to see the dynamic lights. Maybe with a slower plane? Sure, we can get into a slower airplane. We are going at 500 knots now, which is a little bit fast. But it is uh, an interesting way to rapidly see uh, a lot of scenery. And you can see this is a dynamic, dynamically lit uh, 747 as well. And an interesting thing you can do is change the time of day to something like a sunset and the light starts to light up the airplane and you can start to see the detail of the roads. These roads are not custom built. They are autogen. These are autogen roads where we use open street map an open street map lists all of the roads in the world that anyone has ever entered and that anyone has entered into the database. And many roads have been entered into the database. On so all continents? All continents and countries. Now, I cannot claim that every road has been entered into the database, but it is more than any database we have ever found. And we have searched a lot of databases. Okay. And so with OpenStreetMap, we have road maps for all continents. Then we applied a computer program to read that database of where the roads are and auto-generate bridges, highways, roads, exits, ramps, turn-ins, turn-offs, exit ramps, on-ramps, intersections, and you can see the result down here. These roads that you see in this neighborhood are actual roads that exist in reality. We took open street map roads those houses, are they three-dimensional too? They are three-dimensional. So perhaps it is time to get into a helicopter and go down and start looking yes. a little bit closer. So we are getting a nice high-speed view. Maybe now it is time to take a little bit slower view and get in close. Okay, great. So let's go to aircraft, open. Let's see if I can uh, if I can fly this with uh, without normal helicopter controls. Now let let me take a look at where I am. I would like to have my bearings. Um, uh, let's go here. Ah, okay. We're down here. We have Seattle and then downtown Seattle up there. So we are going to go on our current heading and then fly up the coast. So here we go. That's a grass strip. Yep, a little grass strip. I'm going to try a different view here. It's flying the helicopter this close to the screen with the joystick is 
with no resistance is not very easy. Well, maybe uh, uh, a little GA. Airplane. Yeah, maybe <laughs> we need a Cessna 172. We could we could take a GA airplane, but you know I. Once I see the challenge, I must I must try to to reach it. Okay, there we go. Okay, I'm starting to get it. Okay, so as we take off, uh, let's see now if I can go to an external uh, view, and you can see we are in a uh, a Bell. 206 and uh, there we go. and we can look at the water at various different times of day for example we do not need to do everything at night and sunset we have uh, the roads from OpenStreetMap and the water here 